Hi everybody, I'm Suzanne and in today's video I'm going to do a posthumous portrait of a little dog and here is the little the little dog and he looks like he's probably like a Westie mix um really cute little guy and yeah it's it's done on a cradled panel so it's a wood panel so you'll see when I start off the video it'll look like I'm painting on a black surface and what I often do is do an acrylic base or acrylic kind of like primer on these wood panels because these are not uh primed um so there you go so when you see this going on you're gonna be like wait it looks like it's a black you know black surface but it, it's just got that acrylic paint so enjoy the video give me a thumbs up if you like it and know that this is going to be a quick one so let's go ahead and jump into this little white dog's portrait Here's the palette that we're going to use to do this little tiny uh, dog's portrait. Now, basically, this little pup's a white dog, but with white comes a lot of different grays and different colors, right? So here we have, this is Richardson's Cool Raw Umber. This is Michael Harding's Yellow Ochre. This is Titanium White by Winsor Newton. This is Payne's Gray by Winsor Newton. Ivory Black by Winsor Newton. Uh, Lamp Black by Windsor Newton. This is Terra Vert by Michael Harding. Cobalt Blue by Richardson. Cad Red Deep by Richardson. And a little Burnt Sienna for uh, by Michael Harding. And these colors right here, basically those are tongue colors. <laughs> and all these other colors are basically going to be mixing up the color of the dog. So it is a white dog, yes, but there's gonna be lots of grays going on. So sit back and let's mix some gray colors. So here we go, mixing some grays. And you can see basically I have the, the black and the white and the um, Payne's gray, but I'm adding here a little bit of yellow, the yellow ochre, a little bit of the Italian green umber. So I have a lot of different grays going on here and I'm just trying to mix them up. Here I'm just kind of mixing some tongue color, but uh, before you know it, we're gonna have a bunch of color mixed up. And that's really what I'm starting with. And I just do a very loose sketch. And even when I start off a sketch, I, I sometimes make mistakes. You can see I erased that tongue and I'll be putting it back in, but I'm, you know, just very loosely, but make no mistake, I am sticking with the yellower colors on the left side of the dog and the bluer colors on the right side of the dog. Um, because that's how I see it in my reference. When mixing that tongue color, I'm using the, um, the red there, that um, cad red deep, and uh, putting in a little bit of the ivory black to make that tongue color. And I'm just going in with a very beigey, uh, background color. So I know it's kind of scary when I sometimes start off these pieces on a black surface and it kind of looks cool that way, but um, I do that because I put an acrylic primer on first just to kind of seal that wood because this is untreated. This didn't have um, any gesso on it, so I use acrylic. And while I have that wet surface, I like to keep that uh, soft edge so I can create that soft fur around the rough or exterior part of the dog and blend it into that um, that beige that I put down. But still, just kind of popping it in. And I am working quickly. I know that it looks very fast because this is time-lapse, but I am working quickly. Sometimes that helps me capture the dog right away. I'm able to see everything right away. And I know here it's hard to tell, but um, the eyes are very dark, but I'm not using black. It is a combination of the cad red and the ivory black, which is a very deep, deep, warm, brownish black color. So you'll be able to see a lot of the um, things, the details in the eyes, like the um, um, pupil and the eyelids, etc. All of it will show up eventually. But I am using a smaller pointed round, and sorry about my head getting in the way here, um, bad camera angle here for you, but I wanted to show you at least some of the detail as going into making the eyes. Um, but the, I am using a smaller pointed round brush for the detail.
Okay, now I can get in here and really start layering in the paint. And knowing that there's a cooler side of this dog and a warmer side of the dog, and knowing that I want to create the depth, I usually don't add the lighter, whiter colors until closer to the end. Um, so I'm scraping out some of the paint where I'm going to be putting in, representing sort of the body of the dog. And you can see how cool it is. It's very blue because I know that I will be adding other color on top. So I need to have that cooler base to be able to pop on top of it. It truly does make it pop. You knowing your color temperatures and how to manipulate them is key to making something jump out at you. It really is. And we're just moving around and I'm still always just kind of looking at all the edges and sides and working the detail. You can see I keep switching my brushes from a, a filbert, a long filbert to a pointed round. But um, he's coming together. I'm starting to see this little, this little dog um, come to life again. Jumping into some of the detail on the nose and muzzle area. And, you know, being that he's, the angle that the photograph was taken was a little bit of an awkward angle because the person who took the photograph was looking down on top of him. So the nose will look especially big, um, but it's kind of cute. And it is a fun photograph that um, was provided for this painting. And uh, yeah, just getting the edges of the tongue, making sure I know where the teeth go, the nostrils, etc. I'm just kind of popping all the, all the little details in and, and suggesting where the teeth are. Now, when you're doing teeth, folks, in dogs, please don't do them bright white, unless, of course, they truly are bright white. The closer inside the mouth, you can see those teeth that I represented there are just that gray color. Um, and being a little terrier with a, you know, sometimes when a white dog gets wet around the muzzle, they will get that yellowing or kind of uh, darker hairs. And that's, you know, it's part of who this little guy was. And I really wanted to include that too. But you can tell I'm getting closer to the end. Threw some eyelashes in on the little dog. And it always comes to life when I add the shine in the eyes. That's the funnest part right there, folks, is making those eyes come to life. And again, you see I'm using a little smaller pointed round brush and doing some more of the detail and just putzing around here, just getting everything in. And uh, before you know it, we're, we're getting close to the end on this piece. starting to add some of the last detail and I'm usually going in with the whitest whites at the very end and I'm sorry again about my big old head getting in the way but you can see that I'm lightening up some of the areas and I do a lot of turning of the canvas because I know my hand moves a, a certain way better and so I'll flip that that um, substrate over and over and over again uh, till I get all the little details and you can see just popping <laughs> popping it in here popping it there but making sure that I'm keeping track of my reference and making sure I'm on track so again folks I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions uh, maybe uh, ideas on how I can keep my big head out of the <laughs> out of the shot uh, leave it in the comments section I'd love to hear from you and again we'll see you on the other side
And here you see the completed piece. Now, the detail in the eyes is what I always find the most fun. And, you know, getting those little eyelids in, even the little third eyelid there you see in the corner of the left eye, all of that is so much fun. Again, thanks for joining me today. See, didn't take very long at all. <laughs> and here's the finished piece. Now, of course, his eyes are so expressive and it was the fun part of this entire painting was really getting into his eyes and trying to capture, you know, all the little details in there. And when you're doing a white dog, just like it is with a black dog, sometimes the challenge is trying to get the depth in the fur. And you can see how I start off with a cooler tone underneath and then layered um, the paint, the lighter colors on top, and then just try to keep form. So again, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything I covered in today's video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section and I'll get right to you. And uh, yeah, that's it. So until next time from Kingsport, Tennessee, I'll see ya. Bye.